Well, it definitely looks like the folks that held out on the speaker vote over Representative Kevin McCarthy managed to achieve a lot, including getting agreements, some of which will be voted on today as part of the rules vote. We'll probably walk through them after the dust has settled a little bit and discuss. But that battle was a lesson that taught us many things. Among those things, it revealed Representative Dan Crenshaw of Texas for who he truly is, and it wasn't a good thing. Not for him. Not at all. We saw him call his Republican colleagues all kinds of nasty names. Chief among them, of course, was terrorist, as we talked about last week. He even said that they were the enemies for upholding what they felt were their obligations to their own constituents and the American people. Now, good old Danny Boy from Texas is trying to clean things up and apologize. Clean up on aisle 1 through 12, if you will. Yeah, that's how bad it was for Dan Crenshaw last week. First, he made the brilliant move of going on CNN, not Fox. That's right, CNN. And the only thing that could have made this worse for him, or, well, funner for me, would have been if he would have sat down with CNN's newest propagandist, Adam Kinzinger. Unfortunately, he didn't. So, if he was really trying to clean things up with the Republican base, who is obviously very unhappy with him, he wasn't likely to reach them over on CNN. Ooh, missed the target there, son. Well, hold up. Let's think about that for a second. Did he miss the target? Who's he really trying to clean things up with? That's a damn good question, and we'll go over that a little bit later. Well, and it turns out that even in that effort, he was still trying to act like he hadn't really said much of anything at all and that the people were being overly sensitive. So, let's get this straight. The overly sensitive guy is now calling you and me overly sensitive. Uh-huh. Imagine that from a politician. Here's the exact wording. Quote, Look, things get heated and things get said. Obviously, to people who took offense by that, it's pretty obvious that it's meant as a turn of phrase, Crenshaw said to his go-to guy from CNN, Jake Tapper, on State of the Union. Crenshaw really did try to pull off the act that he couldn't understand how it could have offended people, saying he was, quote, a little taken back by the sensitivity. He continued, quote, To the extent that I have colleagues that were offended by it, I sincerely apologize to them. I don't want them to think I actually believe they're terrorists. It's clearly a turn of phrase that is used in what is an intransigent negotiation, Crenshaw said. Folks, calling your political adversaries, even if the beef is short-lived, a terrorist, is frankly some real tired, low IQ, cheap reactionary Democrat speak bullshit, full stop. Anyways, so just a few things for Crenshaw. Let's call them observations. When you make an apology, you apologize. You don't take the time to try to justify why you said what you said and claim the people you attacked are being overly sensitive. This is just more Democrats speak BS once again. You see, when you do this, it looks just a bit like your apology is less than sincere and that maybe, just maybe, this is really all about the backlash that you've just received. Now, we all know your ass is sore and it's hard to sit down. The best thing for you to do is to just come clean and then get the hell out of the way. But I got to go there, just for full disclosure. The other thing here is, yes, calling someone a terrorist isn't like saying you're being an intransigent creep. No, it's not. It isn't just a turn of phrase. No, it's not. Neither is calling somebody your enemy. These terms have meaning, sir. And when you act like they don't, again, you're not being sincere or you're stupid, i.e. a Democrat. Neither one of those things is a good choice here, sir. So it's clear, even after being told the problem, he was still attacking, like this here. I mean, of all the people to lash back at, Tucker? Really, dumbass? Not a good move. Twitter account American Firebrand tweeted out a clip of Tucker Carlson last week. Dan Crenshaw and all of his wonderful brilliance responded with, quote, Unclench your pearls. It's a figure of speech. You can't insult, slander, and hold everyone hostage with no way out and not expect me to punch back because you're a tough guy. He concluded with, 
grow thicker skin. So yeah, Cletus kind of indirectly poked the one bear in the forest that you do not want to poke right now in Tucker Carlson. Anyways, now he wants to claim that he was in favor of a lot of the things that the objectors were fighting for. Mm -hmm. He claimed that he was angry because he thought that they had already agreed to things. But obviously, folks, they didn't have a deal fully reached until at least Friday, when most of the objectors, including Representative Chip Roy, flipped. Sorry, Dan, I don't think people are buying your line of bullshit this time. It's time to get out of the way until the low IQ masses forget about all this and try to work your way back onto daytime Fox. I don't know, maybe do outnumbered. A few circle jerks with Fox and friends. I know Brian over there just loves you always. But in all seriousness, the similarities between a Dan Crenshaw and an Adam Kinzinger or even a Mitt Romney and a Liz Cheney are fascinating. They start off as brave conservatives, fearlessly going on those far-left shows and facing the music. And then eventually, they end up preaching insurrection. Black Lives Matter. They call holdouts terrorists. The desperation for attention is pathetic. And it really shows just how meaningless or reckless they are with their political direction. They're just going with whatever opportunity is put in front of them. And of course, financially as well. Now before I roll this last clip of Tucker, I want to redirect the YouTube viewers, at least for one off, over to Rumble or BitChute for a much spicier video that I'll be posting later on this evening involving election irregularities. Considering I just got a strike a couple weeks ago on YouTube for the very same topic, I'm obviously not going to risk it again. Anyways, link in the description box. Here's the clip. So if people oppose you in an election, typically you try and win them over. You assuage their concerns. You promise them things. You wheel. You deal. You trade some horses. You massage their egos. You don't scream at them. And yet today, Congressman Dan Crenshaw of Texas, a surrogate, for Kevin McCarthy did. In fact, he did what neocons always do. He labeled anyone who doesn't like a terrorist. Watch. Those of us are saying, like, look, you pushed us into this corner, so now we're now we're saying we won't vote for anyone but McCarthy. That's why we're saying it, because we cannot let the terrorists win. Oh, they're terrorists now. It's hard not to see the connection, because over the past few years, pretty much every part of the war on terror has been turned against the domestic political enemies of the neocons. So now they're just coming out and telling you what they told you about Iraq. Either you're with us or you're against us. You're on the side of light or darkness. You're good or evil. Dan Crenshaw went all the way, as neocons always do. He proceeded to go to CNN to call his political opponents enemies of the state. Looking for a little Soviet-style politics? Watch this. This handful of members is um, uh, very clearly looking for notoriety over principle. And that's what it is. And anyone who suggests differently is um, in, in, in some kind of make-believe fantasy reality. But if you're a narcissist, if you're a narcissist and you believe that your opinion is so much more important than everyone else's, then you'll keep going. And you'll threaten to tear down the team for, for the benefit of the Democrats just because of your own sense of self-importance. That's exactly what's happening here. We will not vote for anyone else but McCarthy. These people think they're stubborn or more stubborn. They think they're not going to get the communities they want. Well, obviously they won't, but it's going to be so much worse than that. You know, they are enemies now. So you may like Kevin McCarthy or not. Both are allowed. But no matter how you feel, you have to acknowledge, if you're being honest, that people who don't like Kevin McCarthy have a reason for that. They have real concerns, real issues. But you'll notice that Dan Crenshaw didn't address any of those, none of them. Instead, he impugned their motives, their character, their intelligence, their moral standing. They're narcissists. In fact, and we're quoting, they are enemies now. Now, what you just saw, as Dan Crenshaw spoke, what you just saw is the snarling face of the donor class, revealed for all to see finally. The deep loathing of disobedient voters that may be their most passionate secret emotion. But they're not bothering to hide that emotion anymore. Now you know how they really feel. Well, that's about it for that one, folks. If you liked it, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment down below. There's a PayPal link in the description box, so please put a dollar in the bucket on the way out the door. I'd like to thank everyone for all your donations. They're much needed, 
and much appreciated. Now, with all that being said, we'll see you next time. Come on, move. Move. Easy, easy.